Hey everyone, so it is around 5.30 in the morning. We're in Miyajima and we have jet lag, so we're gonna eat some snacks. We bought these um, momiji, they're local to Miyajima, and they're basically um, little cakes in the shape of maple leaves, and they have fillings in them. So we've already eaten two. We ate a chestnut one and a cheese cream one and um, now we're eating these little guys there are five different flavors in this little bag we're gonna try the chocolate one first so here is what the cake looks like and then when you break it apart there's the filling inside and this one is chocolate hey everyone so we're just getting ready to check out and i thought i would show you my outfit i'm wearing pretty much the same thing that i wore yesterday with one exception and that is the top i have on this is a little turtleneck vest and it's from benetton it's a little bit cropped i'm wearing the same short sleeve cardigan i wore yesterday and a correction it's actually from rw and co this time i just have it unbuttoned so it's just like nice and um drapey and then on on my legs I'm wearing the same jeans, these are from Item, the same Crocs, and also the same Fendi bag. And that is it! So here we are at breakfast. We're having a traditional Japanese breakfast. It's got all these different components and we've got like a nice little salad on the side. So this looks really, really good. So here is the shrine in the morning. It is so nice and peaceful and the tide over here stayed low. So there are lots of people uh, walking out. As you can see here, the tide has come in a little bit and the gate is now floating and you can no longer walk out there. Only once you're So we stopped for lunch before sumo at Ipuro Ramen and I just got, I think this is the Shio Ramen and I added seaweed to mine. And then my hubby ordered this one and they are famous here for their tonkatsu ramen so it's like a pork suitcase. My hubby also ordered extra noodles and the noodles here are quite thin and they are very very good. <laughs> So I didn't narrate at all during the sumo tournament because I really had no idea what was going on. But now that we've kind of been watching sumo a lot more and just generally being more obsessed with it, I'm going to do a voiceover so you guys kind of know what's going on. So in the first clip, I just wanted to show you where our seats were and they were basically really, really far back. So I've zoomed in for the remaining segments and I've sped up this section, otherwise it would take a really long time. But basically this is the entrance ceremony for the top division, which happens at around 3.30 every single day of the tournament, except for the last day. There are 42 wrestlers in the top division and they're categorized as east or west, but you'll only see 36 entering now. And that I believe is because of injuries and also the three top, top guys, the Yokozuna, enter separately as well. So here they are just doing like their kind of synchronized ritualistic entrance. 
Now here is the entrance ceremony for one of the Yokozuna, which is the highest rank you can get in the highest division. So there are three men that currently dominate the sport of sumo, and this is one of them. This one in particular is Haramafuji. The other two are Kakiru and Hakuho, and Hakuho in particular is my favorite and my hubby's favorite as well. And all three of the Yokozuna are from Mongolia. So here he is just doing his ceremonial clapping and basically a demonstration of his um, agility, strength, flexibility, and all of that. And then I thought it was really cute that the gentleman sitting in front of us was kind of mimicking his actions. So I just wanted to show that briefly. And yeah, so here he is in like a squat position and then he's going to very gracefully move his way up and everyone claps and gets really excited. So I just found this whole thing very interesting. And now he's going to do his lifting of the leg and stomping down. And apparently this is an exercise that they practice when they're training. And it's supposed to really develop strength in your legs. After that display, Haramafuji will return to a side of the sumo ring and he'll squat again, do a couple of other claps, and then that will be it for his entrance ceremony. And then the top division matches will begin after this. So I thought it might be fun to show one sumo bout from beginning to end, and this is the match for Endo, which is the wrestler on the left wearing the red. He is a crowd favorite. He hasn't been doing that well, but people just really like him. He's from Japan. So when the wrestlers enter the ring, they basically face the um, outside, so the audience, and they do their leg lifting and stomping. Then they go ahead and take a drink or rinse out their mouths, and they're given a piece of paper or cloth to wipe up. So being in a crowd where people are cheering for their favorites is quite an interesting experience and I will turn on the crowd noise for you so you can hear it too. The crowd was primarily Japanese, although there were a few foreigners. And the girls in particular love Endo. What they just did was threw some salt to purify the ring and now they're going to face each other and do a clap. Now there are a bunch of people circling the sumo ring and they're all holding banners and these banners basically represent sponsors and prize money that goes to the person who wins this bout. And each banner represents around $600 of prize money. So they're just circling, showing the advertisements, and then they're going to exit. So now the wrestlers are going to throw some more salt and then they go into the center of the ring and face each other and they do their leg lifting again once on each side and then they basically stare each other down a little bit and they put their fists onto the ground and they will return to their respective corners again. So this type of pre-match ritual happens before every single bout. The actual bout itself usually lasts only a few seconds, so all of this build-up and anticipation, kind of sizing each other up and getting the crowd all riled up is um, part of every single bout in sumo. So my hubby and I had no clue what we were watching when we got there. We did notice that this happens before every single bout. So we figured it was some sort of ritual, but we had no idea what it meant. And I think we still don't really know what's going on, but um, we've learned a little bit more since then because we've been looking into it. So again, they're going to throw some salt and then they're going to meet in the middle again. So in sumo, there are basically no rules. The only things you can't do, I believe, are punch with a closed fist and grab the genitalia, but everything else goes, so it's quite exciting. The way to win is to either push your opponent out of the ring or make your opponent touch the ground with anything other than the soles of his feet. And there are some other little rules here and there, but um, those situations don't happen very often. So I know I've talked a long time about sumo, but there is so much more to say, and I hope I haven't bored you with all of this information. If you are fascinated by the sport like I am, 
You can actually watch clips of each tournament on a YouTube channel. My husband found this channel. It is in English, and um, the gentleman who runs the channel does recaps of the interesting bouts for every single tournament. There are six tournaments a year, and they happen on the odd number months in the middle two weeks of the month. So I will link uh, the channel down below. It's called Jason's All Sumo Channel, I believe. So now they're going to touch their fists down one more time, and then they're going to return to their respective corners one last time, and they're given a washcloth, and they basically wipe themselves off. They usually wipe their face, maybe their armpits, their chest, and then they throw some more salt, they meet in the middle again, and finally the match begins. The official start of the bout happens when both wrestlers return to the center of the ring and face each other one last time, and when both wrestlers put their fists onto the ground. So you'll see kind of very careful maneuvering the last time that they meet in the middle. I'm going to turn the sound of the crowd on at this point. So now you've basically seen the structure of a sumo match and you can enjoy the rest of the bout. As you can see, after a false start, Endo won that match rather quickly, so you can kind of understand why the pre-match ritual is so long, because otherwise a sumo tournament would maybe last all of 15 minutes with the bouts being so short, although some bouts do exceed 2 minutes. So after the wrestlers bow to each other, Endo is presented with his prize money, and then they go ahead and announce the next match. So this is the second and final match that I'm going to be showing you and it's with Hakuho who is our favorite. He's on the right hand side and he's wearing the brown. He is the ultimate winner of this tournament. He won on day 15 with a 14 and 1 record and we watched on day 4 of the tournament so it was still rather early. They've already done their pre-match ritual so let's just go ahead and watch the bout. <laughs> People do start to leave after the last match, but there is this bow twirling ceremony at the end of each day of the tournament, and this goes on for a short while, maybe a minute or two, and then that is basically it. And after all of the matches, they set up little shops at the entrance of the arena, and you can buy little souvenirs or little sweets and stuff like that. I didn't vlog any more this day. We basically just headed back to the train station and took the train back to Osaka. So that was it for our day of sumo. It was super exciting, and I highly recommend it to anyone who enjoys kind of spectator sports. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow.